I've been editing for over 12 years now, which is a little crazy to say out loud, but it's true. Over that time, I've picked up a ton of keyboard shortcuts, ones that are basic and ones that took me years to discover. In this video, I'm going to tell you as many as I possibly can in a fast period of time so that you can take them and adapt them for your next editing project. I'm Amanda Horvath and I'm all about helping business owners and entrepreneurs leverage the power of video without breaking the bank or taking up tons of their time. So if you're looking to use video in your strategy this year, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Because keyboard shortcuts can be really difficult to remember when you're first learning them, I've included a download with all of the keyboard shortcuts that we're covering in this video so that you can have a quick reference guide for the next time you're working in Premiere Pro. So be sure to grab it. As I mentioned before, these keyboard shortcuts took me years to learn, and when I did learn them, I was mind blown that I hadn't known them before. And at any point in the video, if you have a keyboard shortcut that I did not mention, but you use all the time, please tell me about it. Drop a comment below. Highly appreciate the love. If you stumbled upon this video and you are not currently using Premiere Pro, then by the end of the video, you sure will be considering, huh, maybe I should consider hopping on the Adobe Creative Cloud bandwagon. And if that is the case, I have linked to it in the description below where you can grab your own copy. And with that, let's dive into Premiere Pro. Group one, basic. I'm going to include the super basic ones for anyone that is brand new to this, you can follow along. I'm going to be moving very quickly so we can get through them fast so you can play around with them more on your own time. But I'll tell you what they are, what they do, and maybe how I use them. So the first super basic one is your space bar. This will play and stop your footage. And then the next one is L, and this will play your footage in fast forward. You can click it multiple times and it will move even faster. This is super convenient when reviewing your footage and very quickly chopping out portions that you don't need. So I rarely ever watch it when I'm cutting down my footage in real time. The next one is the plus and minus on your keyboard. This will zoom in and zoom out your sequence. And then if you're, say you're super zoomed in in one area and you want to quickly zoom out and see everything, in your timeline, then I've set a keyboard shortcut that is Shift Z for this, and this is called Zoom to Sequence. Now, if you don't have any of the keyboard shortcuts that I'm mentioning, but you would like to set them to be the same as I am, then you can go to Premiere Pro Keyboard Shortcuts, and then you can type in here, Zoom to Sequence, and you can just select that, and by selecting the area, you can hit Shift Z, and it will add that keyboard shortcut for you. Okay, moving on. The tilde key will make any highlighted region bigger, so it'll make it fill the screen. Now, this is super useful if you are trying to find something or organize your files within this project window or if you want to watch this full screen. So that is the tilde key. The next one is your in and out points. So say you are scrubbing through some footage here and you want to decide which portions you want to add to the timeline, then all you have to do is click I to set your in point, you click O to put your out point, and then you can just drag this down here, or alternatively, you can just click comma and it will enter into your timeline. You can see it actually took this region, pushed it over and added it right there. If I wanted to overwrite some footage, then I would use period, and then it would overwrite it. So I, O, and comma, or period will do that. You can also create your in and out points within your sequence as well, and this is convenient when out or exporting just a certain portion of your video. Group two, ways to make an edit. There are several different ways to make an edit and I use every single one of these at different times. So let me show you what they are. The first one that I absolutely love, I use primarily when cutting down footage. So say I'm scrubbing through this, I'm going to use L and I'm looking, 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 nothing's happening. Right here, I start talking and you can see that by the waveform. Now Q is going to be your best friend, Q and W as you're going through and doing this. So if you click Q, 
Typically what I would have to do is I'd have to use the razor blade, make a cut here, go back to my selection tool, select that area, delete that, and delete this section. That takes a lot of clicks. If you click Q, it does all of that in one take. So it's going to move the start of your timeline to wherever your playhead is. So that is what Q does. And then W is similar, but on the back end of a clip. It will take the end of your clip and move it to where the playhead is. So say I want to make a cut right here instead of having to do the razor blade tool, delete this, delete the gap. All I have to do is click W. So this is extremely helpful when going through and cutting out any back and forth audio that you don't need in your final edit. Now I've already showed you this one, but just to explain it, the razor blade tool is C. So if you click that on your keyboard, then this tool pops up and you can select anywhere and make an edit. It doesn't matter where your playhead is. So that is C and you can also find it right there. Another way to make an edit is with Command K. So if you click Command K, then it will make an edit wherever your playhead is. So if your playhead is here, you wanna make an edit there. And this can sometimes be convenient if say you're scrubbing through watching your footage you want to make an edit there because you want to keep everything before that. And then once I start talking, then you want to take this whole section out and then you just click Q and then it takes that out. So sometimes making a edit where you know that you're going to want something and then you can kind of scrub through, find that next place and use Q. Those two work extremely well together. The last way to make an edit, or in this case, adjust an edit, is using the rolling edit tool, and the keyboard shortcut is R. So if you click R on your keyboard and you hover over somewhere where there is an edit, then you can just slide this left and right instead of having to say, I wanted to move this edit. The alternative is to select this, move this over, and then I take this portion, I extend this here, and then I move that back. Right, and then I have to cut the part off that I didn't want here, use Q, right? Like that takes a lot of steps. If you just have the rolling edit, you can just slide it over and it will extend this one and make that one smaller. If you want it to not make it smaller, then what you can do is use the ripple edit tool and it will extend the clip that you're extending without impacting this clip here. So then you can go like that, and then it pushes everything over. And the command for that one, I don't use it very often. I don't have it set up. But if you would like to set up a keyboard shortcut for that, that is called the Ripple Edit Tool. Group three, navigating the sequence. The goal with editing is to use your mouse as little as possible. That way you're not having to move your hand over and move it back. That really does save you tons of time. So in order to navigate your sequence, there's several ways that you can do this. So if we zoom in, the first one is with the up and down arrows on your keyboard. It will put your playhead at the next edit. And if you go up, it'll go to the previous edit. If you use the left and right keys, then you can go frame by frame to navigate the sequence. So this can be convenient when you're really trying to make an informed edit, so like a very specific edit in a very specific place. Then if say you wanted to move everything further this way because you want to extend this edit, um, which you could use the ripple tool for, but say you wanted to extend it, then you could use shift A is track forward select. And you just select all of that and move that over. Now I think that's a keyboard shortcut that is specific to mine and if you typically do shift A, it's actually the backwards track forward select or track backwards select. And so if you wanna adjust that, once again, you can adjust it in keyboard shortcuts. But I use that one all the time. Highly, highly recommend using it. The next one is if you are scrubbing with your playhead, if you want it to automatically click to an edit, then all you have to do is drag while holding down shift and it will naturally click to that edit. The last one to note is S, which is the magnet or snapping tool. So you'll select a clip and if you're moving it while it is turned on, it will naturally snap to either the another clip or to your playhead. So you can see how it does that. This can be a little irritating if you're not wanting it to snap, 
And so if you want to turn this off, you can either select this right here, or you can just click S and then you can move it very specific frame. So if we just wanted to move it frame by frame, you can see the numbers going up or down for how many frames I am moving it left or right. So I turn that off and on a lot. Group four, other. I just couldn't come up with a name for all of these, but I did want to show them to you. So let's dive in real quick and I'll show you these. So the first one is M, and this will create a marker on your timeline that you can name whatever you want. So we'll just click OK, and then it creates this marker with the name. So this is super convenient when you're breaking down your footage. The goal with editing is that you only ever have to watch your whole video once. So I use labels to when I'm breaking things down, I label which sections are what. So I'll say take one or introduction, or this is where this person is talking about X, Y, and Z. And then it's really easy to navigate the entire sequence by just looking at these markers rather than having to go in and find where that one thing was said. You can also create markers on the clips themselves by highlighting the clip and clicking M, and then you can name whatever you want once more. If you ever wanted to delete the marker, then all you have to do is hover over it, click M, and then you can click delete. And that goes for both types of markers. If you ever wanted to copy your markers from one sequence to another, then Premiere finally has allowed this feature. So all you have to do is go to markers and select copy, paste, includes sequence markers. The next one is your text tool. This is very intuitive. It is just T. So when you click T, you can go over here and you can click and you'll see it created a graphic right there, which is our text. And I can just type anything and then I can adjust it within the essential graphics window right there. The next one is if you want to raise the audio gain on your clips, all you have to do is select a clip that you would like it to be slightly louder. You click G and then you can up the gain by five decimals or anything that you would like it to up to. So I always use this specifically, the adjust gain rather than set gain or normalize all peaks. And then you click OK and it just raises that level. And if I ever wanted to take it away, all I have to do is click G and then I just say minus five and I am back to where it was. And the next one is for unlinking clips. So say you have two clips and you don't want them to be linked together. So say if I'm cutting using the razor blade tool, then I can do that. It's going to cut the video and the audio. If I only want to cut one of the tracks, then what I could do is I would just select them. I would select the track like this. We'll delete this edit. Select and I can click Command L and that will unlink the two to where now they are separate. And then when I use the razor blade tool, it would only cut one of them. Another trick here is if you don't want to unlink them, so now they're linked again, then all I would have to do is hold down option. So I'll get the razor blade tool, hold down option and click, and then that will do the similar thing. It will temporarily unlock them when holding down option so that you don't have to cut through both. I use this next keyboard shortcut a lot and it took me forever to learn and I'm so glad that it exists. So when I use it the most is during the crop in and crop out that I do all the time in my videos. So in order to crop in, I would just create an edit somewhere, select a clip, and then I'd go into effects controls and just zoom in like this and navigate it to wherever I want it to be, adjust it. So say it's cropped in like that and say I have another clip right here that also needs to be cropped in. So it's like, this is cropped in, that's cropped out, this is cropped in again. So what I would do is instead of have to reposition this one manually by going in here and zooming and everything, what I would do is I would just select this, you click Command C on your keyboard, and then you go over here, and this is the one I want cropped in, and I can click Option Command V, this paste attributes dialog pops up and then you can just select whatever you want to paste. So in this case, I just want it to paste the motion right here. And then when I click OK, it's suddenly cropped in. 
so you're not having to go through and zoom in and out on every single clip. That saves tons of time. The final keyboard shortcut I wanna show you is a little bit different and it takes a little bit of a setup and it's for audio transitions. So my keyboard shortcut is Command D. So you would need to set this up. So you would go Premiere Pro, Keyboard Shortcuts, Audio Transition, right there, Apply Audio Transition, and you can make that Command D, click OK. And typically when you create these audio transitions, it creates a very long fade between the two. And it's usually too long. So what a fade is doing is it's taking down the audio of one and bringing up the audio of another clip. And when it's too long, you're going to mix the two audios together and it sounds really funny. So what I've done is I got this from a friend actually, so shout out to him. You go to your timeline, so Premiere Pro preferences timeline, and then right here it says audio transition default duration. And you want to change this from 30 frames to five frames. Click OK. So then when you apply the Command D to an edit, it's going to make a smaller one instead of having it be like that big and that doesn't work. So it's a really, really helpful shortcut. And you could actually select all of your edits, click Command D if you wanted, and have them all have these little transitions on it. So there you go. I know we flew through that extremely quickly. I just wanted to squeeze a lot into this one video. Be sure to grab that download in the description below so you can have a quick reference point for the next time you're editing. I'll see you in the next video.